and welcome to the ESI Africa studio. Speaking with me today is Sanusi O'Hare, uh, Executive Director of the Rural Electrification Fund and the Rural Electrification Agency Nigeria. Hi Sanusi, thank Hi. you for joining us thank today. You. It's a pleasure. Uh, there is a big transition towards decentralization and the deployment of mini grids to electrify many rural communities within Africa. Um, earlier this week, you, you spoke around Nigeria's plans to generate 3,000 megawatts through the deployment of 10,000 mini-grids. Can you give us a short synopsis around government implementation plans? Um, thank you very much. You, you mentioned it's a transition, and this transition was born out of years of failure, trying to just focus on you know, expanding the grid and spending a lot of money on the grid without really having a plan and a strategy for rural electrification as well as exploring our off-grid opportunities. However, since 2005, when the Act, uh, the Electric Power Sector Reform Act of Nigeria came into place, there was more emphasis on trying to um, focus on decentralized technologies so that we can reach all the rural communities. And that's what government is trying to do. Although it took another decade before we started, we only started last year when uh, we were appointed uh, into the Rural Education Agency. But now the strategy is to, as quickly as possible, sort of decentralize all the functions from government alone in terms of funding, in terms of planning, in terms of, uh, you know, equipment, everything. Now government should just basically coordinate, even if we're still going to provide uh, uh, some of, you know, the rural uh, electrification projects, we should allow more private people to come in. So that's basically the plan. However, funding is an issue. A lot of rural, uh, private people are not you know, interested in going to rural communities because the profit margin is not is on the verge of viability for them. So most of them tend to be a bit reluctant. So government has found a way to also support them by bringing in some sort of concessionary funds in the way of grants and maybe loans in some instances, as well as linking them up with various sources of funding. So for instance, the World Bank, we've been discussing with them and they're bringing in about $350 million just for rural electrification. Uh, and then we are planning to use this on mini grids deployments, I mean thousands of them, uh, solar home systems to very isolated communities, as well as spending some on the university's projects, which I'm sure you're aware of. Yeah. So basically the strategy is open up the markets, put the right policies in place, put the right regulations in place that will give comfort to investors to want to come in and uh, get some data, show them what the market is like, and they'll keep, they'll come flooding in. And that's exactly what is happening now. And aside from funding, do you foresee any other challenges? The challenge we would have had is uh, the challenge of regulations, policies. And like I said, this is as a result of years of burning our hands, just trying to extend the grid. So we've learned a lot of lessons. So we made sure we put all these things in place. And now all we're doing is calling investors to come in. Everything is in place. Just, you know, come in and invest. You'll be protected by the regulations. You'll be protected by the government. And this, our president, President Muhammad Dubari, he's really committed, you know, to ensuring that rural people get, you know, electricity because bulk of his supporters are actually from the rural communities. So this is like a mandate that he has given us to, however we can, you know, bring in private people and make sure that investments, you know, go in. And he's been very supportive and he's committed. And we have a minister and the managing director of ARI that is also committed to this. And we are all doing our best to ensure that this target is, is met in the, in, in the nearest year. So the Rural Electrification Agency has initiated uh, the Energizing Education Program. Yes. Can you tell us a bit more about that? This is another special program that is very dear to the heart of the president uh, because, I mean, bulk of Nigerian population, bulk of the 180 million people we have in Nigeria are young people. And these young people are trying to seek education in universities, right? So the government felt this is one initiative from the power sector that should be targeted directly at young people, providing conducive environment, you know, for them to study. In Nigeria now, I mean, the epileptic supply of electricity really affects and hampers uh, the, 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 the smooth flow of uh, education. You want to study at night, there is no electricity and all of those things. So the government wants to target about 37 federal universities and seven teaching, federal teaching hospitals, provide electricity to them on a sustainable basis, bring in private people. Because what we currently do is actually pay for bills and buy um, huge generating sets and also pay for diesel supply. So it's expensive. So we just need something sustainable 
so that they can have you know uh, 24 hours electricity so we're doing this via solar in some instances and uh, gas thermal plants in other instances so how important is strong partnerships to see the, the fruition of this initiative we recognize that we cannot do this alone like i mentioned earlier we need to partner with people with organizations uh, with other sister agencies actually and that's what we've been doing we are basically coordinating this partnering with um, uh, a lot of international development agencies, uh, with World Bank taking the lead, uh, the African Development Bank, the German International Cooperation Agency, um, some other funding agencies like All On from Shell Fund Foundation, um, a couple of others. So we are, we are partnering with them. We have this what we call Donor Coordination um, um, Forum, where all of them come together. We meet with them from time to time. Uh, in fact, the World Bank even has an office in, in REA. Uh, and, a, and a full team. So we recognize this and we're just trying to do all the right things because we realize we've lost a lot of time, you know, from decades of not doing the right things and we're in a hurry to quickly do the right things now. Sunusi, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. We look forward to an update on the project. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you for joining us. I'm Ashley Tehran, broadcasting live from African Utility Week.